uh, hello everyone. So today we will go through uh, LFVM and its space within the FreeBasic ecosystem. So uh, I'm uh, David Carlier. I contribute to various open source projects, can, but more or less related to the BSD world. Can be video games, can be enterprise uh, oriented software. More related to the topic of the day, I eleven commuter since May 2018. Okay. So, what is LLVM? LLVM is a compound of tool set and front ends. Front ends which are able to generate what we call LLVM IR. IR stands for intermediate representations, kind of high level assembly, but much more architecture independent. So if we take a, as an example Clang or Clang plus plus front ends from your source code, the lexer will generate symbols, which will be sent to, to the SEMA to generate a, a, the AST, which is abstract syntax tree, and then to the code gen to generate the LLVM IR. So with LLVM, we have also tools. You can build a nice just say time compilers, we can extend LLVM itself. For instance, we can make module, what we call module pass, which is an extension on the uh, compilation unit perspective, and then function pass, basic block pass, and so on. When we can do some comment checking, we can uh, add some instruction, remove some instruction, if you like. It's a uh, the compilation times pass, right? You have, in addition, the possibility to do some static code analysis. We have what we call uh, sanitizers. We go through uh, later. All of this are available in FreeBSD since 9, 10-ish. First, it was just an option parallel to the old GCC 4.2. It was first a, a need to, to replace the, the old 4.2, which was the last GPL2 version. So it was a, quite, quite a blocker, because from this you can't do C++ 11 and so forth. You can't do only C99. So it was time to, to replace this for, for the system. It took a, uh, so then it became full part of the system f so since uh, FreeBSD 10. I mean, it, it's used to build the kernel, the other land, most of the, uh, most of the ports. Uh, so, so yes, free, the FreeBSD code base did so, so a lot of changes to fit Clang uh, criteria. Hello. Uh, Yes, a lo lot of changes to, to fit a uh, more modern uh, style and so on. So, so then, and then as the time goes, more and more architecture was supported, a AMD64, a ARM, until, until, and then maybe now, maybe only Spark64 remains a bit behind the rest, but that's already a nice progress. So. Yes, here we go. So, sanitizers, what are these? Well, it's not really to, to clean up things, uh, like the, the main, the name I, I say. It's more to, to detect at runtime some type of bugs. So it's kind of, it completes pretty much well the static code analysis part. So, so sanitizer, gives uh, many different uh, runtime library <coughs> to detect some type of, uh, of bug for memory, for rest condition, for ca several kind of, of overflow. For instance, we have memory sanitizer. It's mainly about initial variables. Address sanitizer, it's more for uh, double free, uh, heap stack overflow, 
Well, for for uh, only NetBSD have the, also in addition the leak sanitizer, which which is pretty effective and also have much less performance drop compared to tools like Valgrind, for for example, which can be 20 times slower. Whereas with other sanitizer, it's five times slower sometimes. So yeah, it's pretty much. Uh, we have uh, undefined behavior sanitizer. It's kind of small Swiss, Swiss knife sanitizer. I mean, there is no shadow memory mapping unlike address sanitizer and memory sanitizers. So, so the, it was, uh, for instance, possible to port it to OpenBSD for, for this uh, for this reason. It's it's kind of small uh, sanitizer. It's only for integer overflow, with line pointers. Uh, And the performance drop is pretty small compared to that. And you can combine it with other sanitizer, whereas memory sanitizer and address sanitizer, you can't use it, use them at the same time. They are mutually exclusive. We have a nice rest condition detection called thread sanitizer. So, so all of them are supported by free BSD. In addition, We have components like deep further to do some fuzzing and X-ray instrumentation to do some performance bench benchmarking. Right? So. so for example, this sorry. Mm -hmm. So, for, exa for example, this, this very basic code, address sanitizer is perfectly capable to, to catch the first, the first error, the, the double free, is perfectly capable to, to, to catch it, the use after free as well. As you can see, it detects the, the first heap overflow, as you can see, and displays a line. Yeah. <laughs> Memory sanitizer, as well, is capable to, to, to catch this initialized variable, which can go under the radar very well in production. It works ish in, in release and production environment, but it's not correct code, obviously. As well, thread sanitizer is perfectly capable to, to catch this, rest condition, this obvious rest condition. Like this. Again, it, it shows you uh, where, where the problem lies. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay. So here, memory sanitizer was able to, to catch the initialized variable very well. And if the other sanitizer is capable to catch those two obvious errors, the, the alignment issue, and then the, the integral overflow just below. as you can see.
So here, to show you the, the flag to pass to the, to the front end. So memory satellite is memory, address satellite is address, thread satellite is thread, and then undefined behavior. Right. So. So we mentioned earlier uh, the leap feather component. Uh, but what is fuzzing all about in the first place? Well, it's a testing technique to, to catch certain type of bugs with software mainly libraries, I, I might say, which relies on external uh, inputs. Can be just reading a config file, can be listening a socket, whatever you like. If we take an, ex an uh, example, an image picture parser, if you want to fuzz the, the picture format uh, detection, if you want to, to fuzz if it's, if, how it detects it's a PNG, JPEG, and so on. So the, the leap fuzzer will, will use inputs which we can call corpuses in the uh, fuzzing vocabulary. So those, those corpuses don't, don't have to be full picture, can be just uh, the first bytes of the picture format. Then the deep further we take those purposes, we proceed to do some transformation which we call mutations. It will insert some random bytes to some random offset, remove some other bytes eventually, in order to trigger segmentation fault, bus error, whatever. Those mutations will be then stored, so they can be reused when once you fix your bugs. So, fuzzing is meant to be run long enough, I mean, hours at, at least, if not days, if not weeks, if necessary, in order to, to, to cover the code as, as much as possible. So, as you can see, that completes pretty well the unit test we all know. But, Leap fuzzing is, uh, fuzzing is nice, but there are some, some culprits. I mean, as I said, it fits better with library because with monolithic applications, for instance, if you want to fuzz Nginx, that can become very difficult. It's uh, software relay, relying on events, and leap fuzzer runs the code several times. So that can contradict pretty well, pretty much the application workflow for, 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 for this case. You might need to, to, to do so a lot of changes in order to fit uh, the further needs. So here, to, to display the, how leap further works, you have your first binary. You have one or several corpuses. You, we have also, as an option, it supports dictionary. Dictionary is a sort of way to, to, to guide the fuzzing. Sometimes you may want, may want to avoid too much pointless randomness. Let, let's take a, as an example, you want to fuzz HTTP server, you might not want to fuzz keywords like get, put, delete, and so on. Just maybe some part of the client request. So dictionary is a, is a good way to, 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 to guide a little bit, to make more sense of the fuzzing. And then, with the, 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 the corpus and then eventually the dictionary, the inputs will undergo so, some mutation and those mutations will be then stored in the same place as the original inputs.
So. So how, how in, pra in practice work lib further? You need to, to at least implement LVM further test one input, which take as an argument the, the, the mutated data. So, so it's, a, it's a C function, right? And then you do what you have to do with, with this. So for, for instance, there is an obvious uh, overflow here. So that's why I recommend to, to, to combine further with at least uh, a sanitizer, like a address sanitizer, for instance. <coughs> Once you, you compile your, your first binary, mm. Ah, so, sorry, sorry. Uh, you will see. Um, So I type, I type this. <coughs> and then It comes come with several options. You can show how, how much run it, it will do, the, the memory usage limit. If you want to do some parallel jobs, uh, what you can do as well is the, 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 the max length of, of uh, inputs, the, the initial seed for randomness, it has plenty, uh, but again, on FreeBSD, the leak uh, detection is not supported, but there, there's many. Uh, so then you, you have to, to, to create a meaningful purpose folder. Ah, sorry. Yeah. For instance, I ask him to, to run two two hundred time <coughs> with this uh, inputs folder, and then it was able to to catch the the, the overflow. So it created a crash file. Okay, it was on T.
in. So yet normally it, it, it should create uh, some uh, mutated data with uh, an hash code and then the, the, the transform uh, inputs. So we have now uh, x square instrumentation. It's, uh, as I said earlier, it's uh, for, for doing performance benchmarking. Means, for, ex for example, you're doing just release a new version of your software for your company, and then a customer of yours calls you to tell you that this new release had the a severe performance drops compared to the previous version. So express mutation allow you, uh, at least will help you to find out where the bottlenecks really lies. So uh, express mutation will, when you compile your binary with express mutation, will put some as mutation hook in each function entry, in each function excite for the instrument and function, because you can choose which function you want to instrument and which function you don't want to. Uh, as, for, as for instance, the more function you instrument, the slower the binary will get. So you, you have to, to choose carefully which, which part of the code you want to, to instrument. In order to do this, you need to, to add those attributes. So you, you, you want to, to instrument always those two. You can also to say you don't want to, to you have to, 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 do, to write these attributes. To, to discard the function you, you, you want to avoid to, to instrument. So by default, when you run, once you run your, your updated binary, it will create a file. But you can change the, the file naming. It's by default, it's xy log, the name of the application, and then uh, hash. Right? But then, with LLVM X-ray, you can, you can find out You can do some accounting. That means showing where the, your application spend most of the time. You can order because it will generate kind of CSV-like presentation. So, then. so it says here the, the first uh, version of the Fibonacci. Uh, function is the, 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 the bottleneck in this case, right? So that, that's nice adding some attributes. 
in, in practical, I might say you might not want to touch your code too much to that degree, at least when it's uh, your corporate work. So fortunately, there is another solution. It's via an external configuration file, as follows. Can say please, always instrument those those two, and you can say like, like this too. Never instrument this one, please. And then you can pass this config file as follows. Right. Same thing. It it generates the same binary. So to summarize, summarize. Here, your, your, your binary compiled with x instrumentation. So, I mentioned uh, uh, instrumentation hook, but they, they, they are empty until you run, you run the binary. And then it will fill with, with the timer. With timer, so, so in the beginning of each function, in the, in the excite point of, of each function, in order to generate the, the delta. So, so with LLVM X-ray graph, you can generate the, the, the code graph, and then from this, you can generate uh, SVG, for, for example. So uh, x ray instrumentation works, uh, works well with uh, multi-thread uh, case, but you, you, you have the possibility to, to aggregate data because it can become very verbose, obviously. So you can aggregate, can tell to, to aggregate the, the data in, in one point. So, uh, yes. So, yes, that will be all. Fortunately, my, my free BSD machine at crash yesterday, so I couldn't use it. Uh, if you have any concern, question, can so questions? 